Biden administration is sending troops to Eastern Europe in an effort to stop a Russian invasion of Ukraine. That move has many Americans asking if it's in our country's best interest to get involved. One American who believes the United States should be involved is former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. He says that protecting Ukraine is vital to our country's economy. He also thinks that President Biden's weak foreign policy is enabling Vladimir Putin. Here's David Brody with the details. At this point, the biggest question remains, will President Vladimir Putin invade Ukraine? No one knows the answer to that question. He may not even know mm -hmm. at this point. He's he's racking and stacking. He's performing pretty elegant, rational math for himself to say, I want to have more political influence, more control in my near abroad. Um, he feels still that the Soviet Union was a great thing, and he wants to restore as much of it as he can. Is there a moral obligation to stop him? So America's always had a, a strong belief that we wanted to support other democracies. Part of it's moral, part of it's our understanding of human dignity and the value of every human life, David. But part of it's just plain old importance to American national security. They are, they are twin pillars. And another pillar is the American economy, something Pompeo believes could be directly affected. Almost a third of the wheat, red winter wheat that travels across the world, comes out of Ukraine and Russia and goes through the Black Sea, the very thing that is being threatened by Vladimir Putin. These things matter to the global food supply. Today. If you're living in, in the outskirts of Las Vegas or Bakersfield or in uh, Tennessee or Georgia or in the upper Midwest, you depend on these stable food supplies. The former Secretary of State and CIA director believes it is the Biden administration that helped create this mess in Eastern Europe. The United States enabled this, and that's just most unfortunate, David. When you say enable that, uh, explain exactly what you mean. There's so many pieces to this. Deterrence is about mindset. It's about convincing your adversaries that you are serious and determined. And so, you know, he, President Biden goes to meet with Vladimir Putin to talk about the fact that he shut down an American pipeline for gasoline in our country and says, don't do that again. Uh, no, no other costs imposed. There's a lot of folks in America, tens of millions, that have no trust in Biden whatsoever, that he's, he's going to bungle this one, too. So I pray that they get it right. Uh, I, I want good things for them. This isn't about R's and D's. This is about America. I hope they get it right. China's watching this, uh, and, and do you believe they're seeing weakness from the Biden administration on this? Well, of course they are. The whole world can observe that mm -hmm. weakness. Yeah, Xi Jinping's doing, doing his math, too, not just with respect to Taiwan, with respect to running spies inside the United States. If Trump, by the way, was president, would Putin dare even try any of this? I can only say, what you know, as a, as a faithful... Christian, I can only say, I, I, you know, I don't know, uh, but I can tell you that he didn't. Despite tough words on Biden's handling of Putin in Russia, he does like the decision to go after ISIS's top leader. The, the world is safer as a result of him no longer being part of it. So congratulations to the Biden team for getting that done. It's not the end. The threat from radical Islamic terrorism remains, but it's always good when you can, in a, a way that we did, reach out, take down leadership of these terror networks you make more difficult for them to bring that terror to our homeland. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Well, the world is looking at American weakness when you have the spokesman for the South Korean military saying America is getting weaker as we speak. Uh, they're not talking about any one particular administration. I mean, you can point to the withdrawal from Afghanistan as a major blunder that you don't get your own citizens out of the country before you get your, your military out of the country. So you can look at that and say that was a huge blunder. But what they're really looking at is the political division within our country, where you look over the past four years, two attempts to impeach a sitting president, then the whole turmoil over the election in 2020, uh, the continuing turmoil, the continuing division uh, is the Biden administration really centered and in power? Or are we just biding time until the midterm elections? All of those things point to weakness. And then on top of it, we're weakening our own currency. We're continuing to borrow against our currency. Our debt is up to $30 trillion. Uh, and the world is actively wondering, can we even afford another war? Can we afford to be the world's police? Uh, all of these questions point to American weakness. 
there's a lot more to this equation than one particular administration. We have to come back together as a people. And again, a house divided can't stand. We have to find ways to come together. Well, in other news, meteorologists are calling the winter storm spreading across the country a marathon. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Right, Gordon. As the storm moves into the northeast today, most of the country is dealing with the large amounts of snow and ice it left behind. From New Mexico to Michigan, more than a foot of snow accumulated across multiple states. Ice and sleet causing thousands of power outages and dangerous travel conditions. In Austin, Texas, icy roads were blamed for a 14-car pileup. We are dealing with one of the most significant icing events that we've had in the state of Texas uh, in at least several decades. More than 150,000 people are without power in Tennessee, where trees took down power lines. And in Alabama, a tornado touched down near Tuscaloosa, killing at least one person. The snow and ice is now headed for the northeast. The National Weather Service issuing winter storm warnings and watches for more than a dozen states. Well, turning now to Israel, where despite pandemic restrictions, large numbers of pilgrims gathered at the Jordan River recently to celebrate the baptism of Jesus. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell has that story. The celebration began with prayers at the Greek Orthodox St. John the Baptist Monastery. It's the Memorial Day of the Baptism of Jesus Christ. Then worshipers took the mile-long trek to the Jordan River. The Patriarch and all the fraternity were coming here in Jordan River and to make the service here as it was before approximately 2,000 years. This is Qasr al-Yahud on the Jordan River, and beyond that is the country of Jordan. Many believe that this is the place where Jesus was baptized by John, where the children of Israel crossed over into the Promised Land and Elijah the prophet was carried off to heaven in a chariot. Every year we have more than 15,000 pilgrims from Greece, from Russia, from Romania, from Bulgaria, all the Orthodox countries. But this year, unfortunately, we are only the people that were living here. Before the pandemic, some 800,000 pilgrims visited the site each year. While only 50 were allowed last year, some 1,700 participated in the annual celebration. This year there were more people than last year because the corona guidelines were expanded, but there was still a smaller amount in relation to previous years. Known as the land of the monasteries, the area is considered part of the West Bank, biblical Judea and Samaria. While under Israeli security control, both Israelis and Palestinians are welcome to visit. Qasr al-Yehud, the baptismal place, is a religious site that is open in general to all religions and peoples, to whoever wants to come here without restrictions on religion, race or gender. That includes Christian foreign workers who live in Israel, like Sophie. Today is the best, best, most wonderful day in the world. I'm happy that I've come here and that I have this opportunity, that there's a church here and I feel well. I thank God for that. And even some Israelis visited the holy site. We have 35 amazing Israelis who really are attracted to this beautiful day. First of all, we are lucky, you know, beautiful, the most fantastic weather. And of course, this amazing site, which is actually the third holiest site for Christianity in the world, after the Holy Sepulchre and the Church of the Nativity. Moshe Maoz is a licensed Israeli tour guide. The fact that Israelis, Jewish Israelis, we are born here, we're educated here. We definitely were exposed to the Bible and some of us to the New Testament. And here we are in the Holy Land. This is the treasure of the world. This is where everything started. Here we are, we are citizens here. So why not to see the treasury and the beauty of this country? And my O's had a message for all those longing to return. This is the Holy Land, the actual Holy Land of the world, the center of the world. Please come. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris Gordon. Fewer pilgrims, but still a powerful moment of remembrance. It's still a very powerful place. I've been there. I've had baptismal services there. And it's amazing to see it because what you have to do is literally travel through a no man's land. Uh, there are these fences along the road and warnings that they're landmines because this is one of the closest points to Jordan. 
uh, and terrorists have used that uh, proximity to come into Israel. But here's something for you. You may not have picked up from that, that piece, but the Arab name for this place is Qasr al-Yahud. And when you translate that, it's Bridge of the Jews. Even the Arabs recognized that 3,500 years ago, this is where Joshua and the Israelites crossed the Jordan River to come into the Promised Land. You can say all you want, this is West Bank, and these are illegal settlements, and this is all, all this other kind of political stuff. The historical record, the historical record in Arabic is this is the bridge of the Jews, and this is Judea and Samaria. This is an historic part of the nation of Israel. China's brutal persecution of Uyghurs and Christians has led to a global diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics. Some of the same leaders criticizing Beijing's human rights record are personally profiting from business deals with China. Investigative journalist and author Peter Schweitzer exposes how American elites are getting rich while making China even more powerful. Gary Lane has the story. The first American president to set foot on Chinese soil. 50 years after President Richard Nixon opened the door to China, the country is on the verge of overtaking the United States as the world's leading economic power. So how did that happen? From Henry Kissinger to the Bush family, the Bidens and many others, America's elite have helped China become what it is today. On the global lane, I spoke with investigative journalist Peter Schweizer about his new book, Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich Helping China Win. American elites in Wall Street, uh, Silicon Valley, and Washington, D.C. Uh, have been saying for decades that if we provide China with capital, with access to technology, they would liberalize and become more like us. Uh, that hasn't happened. China's actually become more authoritarian. Uh, but when they sort of pushed for that bargain, uh, they ended up getting very wealthy uh, by doing deals with Beijing. Schweizer contends the big money deals are hurting the USA by providing the Chinese Communist Party influence on Capitol Hill and leverage over the Biden White House. We looked at those deals that the Bidens got. Uh, there's basically five deals. And we looked at the businessmen in China who made that happen. And what we found is that in every single case, those businessmen had ties to the highest levels of Chinese intelligence. So this is not just a corruption story now. It, it has a very strong uh, tint of intelligence, espionage, and spying. Where does Joe Biden fit into this? Uh, the assumption has been this was all Hunter sort of freelancing. Uh, what the new information makes clear is that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, uh, when he was vice president, uh, and I think probably up to this day, uh, have intermingled finances, uh, meaning that Hunter Biden was paying Joe Biden's bills while he was vice president of the United States. So that means that while Hunter Biden is collecting the money, one of the beneficiaries of that money is Joe Biden himself. So what does this mean now that Biden is president and China is making threatening moves against Taiwan, the South China Sea, elsewhere? Is the U.S. president in a compromised position? I believe he is. Furthermore, Schweizer believes Congress should immediately hold a joint investigation into the Biden family business dealings with China, although he points out why he thinks that is unlikely. The problem is that you have a lot of people on Capitol Hill from both political parties uh, who also have deals with Beijing. So they're not particularly interested in highlighting the commercial ties that the Bidens have, even though they are tinged with these relationships with uh, senior levels of Chinese intelligence. It would open a whole Pandora's box on Capitol Hill. You talk about Senator Feinstein, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, Republicans and Democrats, I might, might add. Uh, their family members have business relationships with China. Are the dealings unethical or criminal? I don't know if they violate laws. I'm not a lawyer, but they're certainly highly unethical. I mean, look, you look at any of them, whether it's Mitch McConnell and his family shipping business, uh, by which all of their ships are built by the Chinese government, uh, all the crews are provided by the Chinese government, the financing of the ships is provided by the Chinese government, the contracts to ship goods around the world are provided by the Chinese government. Uh, they have complete leverage over him. You could look at the Pelosi's, uh, you could look at the Feinstein's, 
you can find the exact same thing. This is an enormous problem of vulnerability that a foreign power, a foreign power that has been quite open in saying they want to supplant the United States as the supreme power on the planet, uh, that our leaders have commercial ties that puts them at the mercy of their whims. That's, that's a huge problem for our country, uh, and we need to address it immediately. And the outside influence extends way beyond the Washington power corridors. Schweizer believes Silicon Valley's relationship with the Chinese Communist Party poses a dangerous threat to America's technological and economic future. President Xi of China has said that if China can become the superior power in artificial intelligence, they will uh, seize the commanding heights of the competition with the United States. What is Google doing? Uh, what is Microsoft doing? They are actually funding artificial intelligence research at laboratories in China that are linked to the Chinese military that are helping them in their competition with us. And wealthy friends of the CCP are influencing American colleges and universities. In his book, Schweizer writes about NBA owner Alibaba Vice President Joe Tsai, who donated $30 million to Yale. These executives linked to Chinese companies like Joe Tsai um, uh, try to hide the fact that the money's coming from overseas. Um, they list this as a donation from Tsai's American Foundation, but that American Foundation has no assets according to tax filings. He's really pulling the money from his other foundations overseas. And the reason they try to conceal it is Yale University and other colleges are required to list foreign donations with the U.S. Department of Education. It's a problem not just at Yale, but at campuses from Stanford to the East Coast. Uh, and again, they try to hide that these donations are coming from China, and it is influencing the debate on our college campuses. So what needs to be done to reverse course? Schweizer recommends several steps, including new laws against Chinese media and propaganda companies to prevent them from influencing American public discourse. He also believes strict limits should be placed on Chinese lobbying. There are at least 23 former U.S. senators and members of Congress that are lobbying in Washington, D.C. on behalf of Chinese military or intelligence-linked companies. I believe that Americans have a constitutional right to petition their government uh, which amounts to lobbying. I don't believe that right should extend to Chinese military and intelligence-linked companies. So we need to ban lobbying by these companies in Washington, D.C. Gary Lane, CBN News. Well, that is a disturbing report, but it's been going on for a very long time. And it's at the upper echelons of our culture, of our government, of our edu educational systems. At all of our high-tech companies, uh, the ties back to China are absolutely astounding. When you start thinking about the amount of money that China is able to deploy to either lobby our government or influence our, our key leaders, they're so intertwined now that trying to uh, sort of stand up, if you will, to Chinese aggression is completely off the table. Uh, because they're so intertwined from, from our economic elite. So what do we as ordinary citizens do? Well, we have to call for laws to say, uh, let's please pay attention to this. China is playing a very long game, and they're quite open that they want to be the dominant power in Asia, and also quite open that eventually they want to be the dominant power on the, on the planet. Uh, they're calling this, many people are calling it, the Chinese century. Um, and for them, there's a payback here. Uh, you look at the wars, and we call them opium wars, because uh, the Western powers, the European powers, demanded that the markets be open, that Great Britain be allowed to import opium into China. Uh, these are our, our national disgraces for China. You look at World War II and what the Japanese did in Nanjing. Um, these are deep offenses, and so they, they're looking for payback, but they're doing it very intelligently and very uh, deliberately. Um, you look back at the Cold War with Russia, Russia never allowed um, U.S. investment in their economy. Uh, Russia never invested in the American economy. There was a quite clear divide, and anyone with any kind of Russian ties, you, you looked at, well, was espionage behind it? Were they looking at our military secrets? 
uh, it, you know, go, it goes on. You couldn't imagine it happening. Well, China played a very different game, and they are absolutely intertwined. And it's amazing to me that our high-tech companies, uh, Cisco in particular, have revealed to them how to use the Internet to monitor their own population, and they're taking that to levels that Cisco never imagined. Uh, these are very serious allegations. We all need to be aware of what's going on and then in turn lobby our own government. We need to change this. We need to have things in place uh, that we recognize the threat against American interest and, and what China's ultimate end game is. Well, Peter's book is called Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich, Helping China Win. And you can find it wherever books are sold. $10 a day. That's all Valerie had to feed her family of five. Before long, the stress of trying to make ends meet broke her. Valerie dropped to her knees, cried out to God for help. The result? Her family's income quadrupled. Even though both of them worked, David and Valerie Crow were having a hard time providing for their family of five. We were struggling financially. Um, I was working part time. Uh, so I had three kids that we were homeschooling uh, and we just moved and so it was a new place. Um, I was working as a working foreman and superintendent. We had flipped some um, properties. Uh, one of the investment properties that we had kind of went south and we were not bringing in an awful lot of money. There were a lot of days that were really hard. I operated on a $10 a day for uh, meals for a family of five. And it just seemed like one thing after another. I remember one day kind of reaching my breaking point, And I remembered what somebody else had said, that they just got on their knees and cried out to God. And that's exactly what I did. And with hands up in the air, I was like, I can't do this. Then one day in 2015, Valerie came across the 700 Club. I was intrigued by the international news reporting that the news wasn't just doom and gloom, it was just news. <laughs> and then there were also so many stories of hope and encouragement. Valerie started watching the show regularly and heard about the law of reciprocity. The fact that God is just wanting us to trust him really resonated for me. And I was like, wow, that really makes sense. And it made me realize that yes, we should be contributing to our church. They decided they would commit to giving. And we said, okay, we're gonna do 3% this year. And then we bumped it up to 5%. And we kept giving and put it into our budget and made it a regular habit. They bumped their giving up again to 10%. The couple also decided to become CBN partners, starting at $20 a month. Dave was working in road construction and Valerie ran a home-based business. The next year, even though Dave had a health crisis and could not work, they never stopped tithing. We really didn't think twice about cutting back um, or tithing. We just wanted to give more. Soon after, Valerie started a new career in real estate, earning twice as much as she had before. By the following year, Dave was healthy again and had started a new job with better benefits. And then the next thing you know, there's um, Valerie has another sale of a new home, or I wind up getting a, a, a wonderful review and, and get a raise. God always paves the way. In 2018, Valerie's income doubled again. So that year, they decided to double their monthly giving to CBN. I prayed over it. And what God said to me is water. The basic necessity of people in life is water. And of course, CBN's teachings, the Operation Blessing was an inspiration behind that because there's so many great things that Operation Blessing does. And I love how they help women with small businesses that couldn't feed their family, but now not only feed their family, but feed their community. The Crows used their increase in income to sponsor their first water well project in Guatemala. The next year, the blessings just kept coming. So they upped their giving again and funded the construction of two houses in Kenya that have a rainwater collection system to have access to water. They've also sponsored two other water projects in Guatemala, one large enough to supply fresh water 
to an entire community. Operation Blessing is just exactly that. It's a blessing uh, to be able to go ahead and in these uh, disaster areas, whether it's storm-related, flood-related, fire-related, and see Operation Blessing on site and to know that, well, this is great. This is what we've been contributing towards. It's, it's very satisfying. Today, the Crow's annual income is four times what it was before they began tithing consistently just six years ago. Sign up. If you trust in God, make a move to help others. It comes back to you many, many times over. Make a move to help others, and it will come back to you many times over. What's the key to blessing? Here it is in Psalm 91. When you do these things, when you, when you, when you put things into action, then you get this wonderful promise. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So here, David and Valerie are, are reduced down to a point where they can't provide food. I mean, they can't even do the basics of life. But they reach out and they call upon God. First, they put his word into action. And the word is quite clear, give and it will be given unto you. But the next thing you need to do is get a word from God. I will call on, he will call on me and I will answer him. So what are you asking God for? Uh, ask God for creative ideas. Ask God for ways that you can get more income. Ask God to show you the way to live, to show you what to do. He will answer you. He will show you these things. He will deliver you in time of trouble. He will be with you. He promises all these things. God has an infinite supply of creative ideas and he wants to give them to you. So come to him believing. Come to him believing that he has that for you. But come believing in the power of tithing. And when you have that working on your behalf, then you know God has your future. You don't fear it. Uh, you don't wonder. You know that he will provide for you. In 2022, if you want to have that assurance that God is with you, start tithing. And there's an easy way to do it where you can just pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to give. I want to give to help people around the world. Just what you saw where water wells were being provided for people that didn't have access to clean water. I want to be a part of that. If you want to preach the gospel around the world, uh, join the 700 Club. A portion of every gift goes into the work of CBN International to do just that. So how much is it? It's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. Some of you have more resources, and so you can give more. So 700 Club Gold at $40 a month, 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. 2,500 Club is 2,500 a year. Uh, founder, $5,000 or more a year. At whatever level you'd like to join, do it now. 1-800-700-7000. Now, when you join the 700 Club, we have a gift for you. It's my father's new book on the power of the Holy Spirit in you. In it, you'll discover all the blessings available to you through the Holy Spirit. Take a look. Pat Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. The Holy Spirit is infinite. If He pours out blessings on you, He can also pour out blessings on me. There are sufficient resources at the disposal of an infinite God to reward each one of us with bountiful blessings. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com helping people all over the world without ever leaving your living room. When you're a 700 Club partner, that's what you do every day. Palessa is a child that you helped who lives in Africa. Because of you, she has a healthy, happy future. And for that, she'd like to thank you herself. So take a look. Palessa was only eight days old when she was abandoned and left with a family member. When she was five, she arrived at Beautiful Dream Society, a children's home supported by Orphan's Promise. Maven is her house mother. Palessa is like a daughter to me. I make sure she knows she is loved and that she has a family. 
I love being a part of this home because I get nice clothes and food. I like to play with the dolls and ride the bicycle. I love my family here because they take care of me and protect me. Palesa is one of 11 children in this home. Not only are they provided with an education and everything they need, they also get taught about Jesus. We teach them that the love of Jesus is unconditional, that when Jesus says he loves them, he means it, and if they know him, everything is possible. I love devotions, especially when we get to tell what we learn from the stories. I love to hear that Jesus went from house to house to preach the word of God. When I grow up, I want to be an evangelist. At school, I tell my friends about Jesus. Helping these kids makes my heart so happy. To all our supporters, we really appreciate everything you do to make their lives easier and happy. I pray that God will help you to continue giving. Thank you for everything you are doing for me. That is a heartfelt thank you. And it goes out to you, 700 Club members. We want to say thank you because Palesa's life is incredibly different than what it would be if you had not come in and offered all of the opportunity that you bring along with the hope for a bright tomorrow. We want to say thank you to the rest of you. You know, joining the 700 Club is such an easy thing. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and our number's toll free. So you can call right now, 1-800-700-7000. Just say you want to join the 700 Club. There are all the opportunities you have. 700 Club general membership is the $20 a month, but maybe you'd like to be a 700 Club gold member at $40 a month. Our 1,000 Club members come in at $84 a month, and then we have our 2,500 Club members. That's $2,500 a year, breaks down to $209 a month. Or you could be a founder. They come in at $5,000 a year, and that breaks down to $417 a month. You can make such an incredible difference in the lives lives of literally thousands and thousands of people. And as we said, it will be happening every day while you're at home in your living room. So call now. And when you join, would you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work. You don't have to remember anything or have any special things on hand. But it does save us some additional monies that we can put right into the lives of people like Palissa and the children in her home. So call now and say, I want to join the 700 Club. Tell us what level you'd like to join at and that you'd like to do it using Pledge Express. Our way of saying thank you to you for that is to send you Power for Life teachings. You'll get one of these every month. We think they'll be a huge blessing to you. So you have two gifts coming today. Pat's book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. And if you're using Pledge Express, we're going to send you those Power for Life teachings. So call now. Gordon? Well, when you join the 700 Club, you help people right here in the USA. People in the military like Matt. He wanted to serve both God and country by becoming a Navy chaplain. And thanks to CBN's Helping the Home Front, Matt is well on his way to making that happen. After two years of college, Matt felt God was calling him to join the Navy, and he was excited to begin his career. His fiance Victoria was up for the challenge of becoming a sailor's wife, even though long separations were in their future. I just realized that God would make a way for it to work, even though it seemed a lot bigger than what I thought I was capable of. After the couple married, Matt believed God was leading him to apply for the chaplaincy program. I had met a chaplain on the base that I was stationed at, and I just saw his energy, his positivity, and the way that he could help people. I was like, that makes sense. And that's when all the dots kind of lined up and connected. And I said, I, I understand now. That's, that's where he wants me to go. To make this happen, first Matt needed to finish his bachelor's degree, and it wouldn't be easy. By day, he served as a full-time sailor, by night, a full-time student. He received financial assistance this time. However, the college student loan payments from before he joined the Navy were tough to make. The couple stretched their budget by cutting out non-essentials, including TV service and trips home to see family. It's hard to be away from them as they're all like developing their lives and just seeing my nieces and nephew come into the picture. That's hard not being there for that. Matt and Victoria relied on their faith in God and trusted that they were pursuing his calling for their lives. It's hard right now, but it's not always going to be this kind of hard. It's going to be hard in different ways at a different time. But right now, this is what he has for me. Their prayers were answered when Pillar Church San Diego contacted Helping the Homefront and told us about Matt and Victoria. 
Pastor Daniel Carter shared that helping the home front was paying for a trip home to see family. What? That's so sweet. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was just the beginning yeah, of the surprise. So, so there's one more little thing here. CBN, Matt, wants to pay your entire student loan balance. Dude, get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> oh, why? What? Why? <laughs> that's amazing. It's going to make me cry. <laughs> You're allowed to. <laughs> really? Oh really? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh Dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm still in shock, really. Really. So Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's amazing. Wow. Now Matt is free from financial worries and can concentrate on becoming a Navy chaplain. This has been a huge game changer for us. I am so thankful for CBM Partners and just the, peop the, the people who have responded faithfully when they gave, donated, and helped in any way, shape, or form. It is life-changing. It is an answer to our prayers. Huge blessing, and I'm, we're so grateful, and I hope that one day we can be a blessing and say yes. to us. That blessing, that thank you, it goes to you if you're a member of the 700 Club. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us, to join in everything we're doing here at home and around the world. You're a part of all of it when you become a member of the 700 Club. If you'd like to, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, yes, I want to sign up. Again, it's $20 a month to be a 700 Club member. You can also join at 700 Club Gold, $40 a month. $84 a month and 2,500 club, 2,500 a year. Founder, $5,000 and then chairman circle, 10,000 or more a year. At whatever level, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. The bank doing all the work and we can send as our gift to you. Power for Life, monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call. Or you can go to CBN.com when you give monthly on the giving page. You automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We also have a new thing where you can text, text CBN to 71777. A monthly giving form will come up on your smartphone. When you give that way, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. As an additional bonus, when you become a 700 Club member, we'll send you a copy of my father's new book on the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Now, Dad knows what he's talking about. You look back over the 60 years of CBN, Dad knew how to get direction from God and how to get direction from the Holy Spirit. He and my mother would get together and pray and claim that wonderful verse, when two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done. And they would learn how to study how to get direction from God. And that direction has guided CBN. Here's the, here's the best part. You get to learn how to get direct guidance from God to empower your life, and it's through this book. Take a look. In Pat Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, discover the life that is available to you. This I can say with certainty. If a believer sincerely cries out to the Holy Spirit for guidance and direction, the Holy Spirit will move heaven and earth to keep his servant from being misled. He will bring us direct guidance and the answers we need for each step of our lives. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. As I wrote this book, I felt that I was personally on the edge of something so enormously wonderful. It should be made available to everyone who has been filled with the spirit of the living God. CBN presents The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, a new book by Pat Robertson. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible to us. In this powerful book, Pat illuminates the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible and reveals how the Spirit is working in believers today. I marvel at the strength God gives His people 
when we realize that the Spirit of God will go like a mighty warrior before us and that none of our enemies can stand against us. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Call now or go to CBN.com. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. President Biden announced a new initiative to fight gun crimes. He unveiled his plan during a visit to New York City Thursday, just one day after thousands of police honored two officers killed in the line of duty. So far, shootings in New York are up 32 percent over last year. The president announcing plans to check the flow of illegal guns on the East Coast and stressing that defunding the police isn't the answer to rising crime. Instead, he said... Police need better training and tools to serve and protect their communities. Well, CBN's Operation Blessing is helping hardworking families around the world. In Peru, Gisela followed in her grandmother's footsteps, creating handmade crafts from local resources. However, she didn't make enough money to take care of her three children. The situation only worsened when a storm destroyed the family's ramshackle hut. After learning about her plight, Operation Blessing provided Gisela with a brand new sturdy home. Plus new materials, and information about how to improve her craft business. Well, you can find out more about Operation Blessing by visiting its website at ob.org. Zach Miller was going down fast due to COVID-19. Doctors said he had only one option. It was the thing that Zach feared the most, being put on a ventilator. So why did he finally agree to it? And how did a massive call on social media help save him? Take a look. <coughs> I couldn't breathe. My chest was getting heavy and I was coughing. It had been two weeks since pastors Zach Miller, his wife Mandy, and their kids had become ill in December of 2020. While they were on the mend, Zach continued to get worse. I was concerned. I had, you know, heard all of the stories. It did worry me. Meanwhile, Mandy looked to her sister, Holly, a radiologist, for guidance. Finally, he was struggling to breathe. His heart rate would, uh, was over 200 beats per minute. I told Mandy that it was definitely time for Zach to go to the hospital. By then, Zach was so ill, Mandy had to call for an ambulance. We were all gathered, and I remember just telling them, you have to pray. We need a miracle. I need you to pray. Zach was taken to Mercy Hospital in Rogers, Arkansas. Unable to stay with Zach in the hospital, Mandy waited in the parking lot. Finally, an ER doctor called. Zach was COVID positive and had critically low oxygen levels. The infection had gone septic and he was fighting double pneumonia. He assured me, he said, this is gonna be a very short stay. Zach is young and healthy, no pre-existing conditions. However, over those next few days, Zach went into respiratory failure. By December 30th, Doctors felt there was only one option. He was unable to oxygenate his blood. The ventilator at that point was his option for survival. That was the last thing the Millers wanted. I had heard people who were put on ventilators would never come off. The nurse came in and she simply said, you know what, this is where we're going. We really need you to get on a ventilator. I could see the urgency in her eyes. Finally, the couple agreed to have Zach intubated. At once, Mandy prayed, trying to quiet the thoughts racing through her mind. We've got to grow old together. Um, I can't do this life without him. Um. By now, there was no time to waste, and the staff scheduled the procedure immediately. Before they wheeled Zach into ICU around 2 a.m., Mandy asked to FaceTime with her husband. I remember Mandy waving at me and saying, babe, it's going to be OK. You got this and he gave me a thumbs up. It was then Mandy put another option in motion. She reached out on social media asking family, friends, and the members of their congregation to wake people up and pray. We had a Zoom call set up. We just had people praying together. We had our staff and leadership praying, just singing and worshiping. My prognosis was very guarded. However, I knew that Hope and prayer and faith were the only things that were going to get us through this. In the darkest point of my life, I could feel such hope and such peace 
um, through those prayers. For the next nine days, the prayers continued, and Zach remained critical but stable. Then on January 8th, doctors started weaning him off the ventilator, hoping his lungs were strong enough to breathe on their own. Two days later, on Sunday, January 10th, Mandy was leading an online church service when she got a video chat call. It was his nurse, Michael, and he said, hey, I was just calling to give you an update on Zach. And then he turns the phone around and puts it on Zach. And it took me probably a good five seconds or so before it dawned on me, oh my goodness, the, the tube is out. The next day, Zach was moved out of the ICU to a step-down room. I could just feel the presence of God. I looked over at the oxygen monitor. They keep a pulse ox on your finger. At the time, it was at 90. And right after I sat up, it went all the way up. And my oxygen levels were as high as they had ever been. Seven days later, Zach was discharged. And while it would take eight more weeks of rest, he fully recovered. The fact that he didn't have long-term complications is a testimony to the healing that God did in Zach through this process. Today, Zach and Mandy look forward to healthy, happy lives, grounded by a faith rooted in prayer. Prayer became my lifeline. It became everything. Over and over in my life, I've learned one thing, that God is faithful. That is an incredible story of the faithfulness of God. It's also an incredible story that prayer changes things, that when we all stand together as God has encouraged us to, that heaven is moved. And so today we want to take some time to move heaven on your behalf. I know there are many of you watching this story now and you're saying, I, I need God to do something big for me. And so we want to encourage your faith with some other stories where God has moved. And then we want to take some time to just petition heaven on your behalf. This is Mary who wrote by email and said, the 700 Club was on. I was not a regular viewer and healing prayer was starting. As directed, I put my hand on the area of pain, which was on the right side of my neck. It caused headaches and discomfort at night, making it difficult to sleep. Gordon said, someone has a pain on the right side of their neck, maybe arthritis. You are healed of the pain. I claim that healing from God, have not had any more neck pain or headaches. Praise yeah. God. I am now a regular viewer <laughs> <laughs> and have become a CBM partner. Thank you, Mary. Uh, here's one. This is Nancy by email. My husband's uh, cousin, Gregory, was admitted to the hospital for severe COVID symptoms. The doctor informed the family he had waited too long to go to the hospital. He would probably not make it. He was intubated, placed on a respirator. Uh, on that very day, I was watching the 700 Club. Terry said, there's someone on a respirator or someone you love is on a respirator. And the reports you are getting are not very positive. But God is saying to speak life over your loved one, to speak the word of the Lord, and to trust God for to the turnaround that's coming. It's so close. Just watch the miracle he will perform. Well, I was in tears. I shared the message with his family. We prayed, believing the Lord answered our prayers, was true to his word. Greg is a living miracle. Wow. Let's pray. Lord, we lift everyone to you. We speak life to them. We speak you over them. For you are life, and you came to give us life, life more abundantly. So we speak life and health and vitality to everyone listening right now, that you would be with them and that you would breathe over them and restore them to health. Terry, God's given you something. There's someone, you have uh, incredible migraines on a regular basis, and you'll know this is you. It's not any one place. It's like the whole front of your head is just like a mask of pain. God is healing that. It's coming off of you right now. You'll not have them anymore. Begin to thank him and praise him for that in Jesus' name. There's someone you have severe bronchitis. Uh, it's a searing in both of your lungs, uh, gurgling when you breathe in. God is healing you right now. He's clearing out all that infection, all that uh, bronchitis, all of that fluid, leaving you right now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath and realize God has healed you. That searing pain is gone right now. 
If someone else, you have a problem with blood flow, like your fingernails and your toenails get almost blue colored, God's healing that for you. It's just going to return to normal and you'll be healthy in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been touched, let us know. Give us your good report. Call us 1 800 700 7000. Here's a word from Corinthians. Praise be to God for his indescribable gift. God bless. We'll see you next week.